Hey everybody, this is True Power Spine, the host of TPIMSR Live. This show has been pre-recorded, so let's roll the clip. Taking a hiatus since the recent appointments of John Bolton and our new DCI, Director of Central Intelligence. So I only came back today, folks, because I was finally forced to get rid of my dial-up. Now that I have Wi-Fi, I can go on Instagram. And I couldn't believe it, Mr. Nelson. I went on an Instagram site and found a photograph of me with a caption by a young man who's now an elementary school teacher in Arizona. And in that caption, he had that photograph of me saying that one day you're going to help change the world. And as I proved through his photographs and seeing what he's doing out there, he's actually making a positive change in the world. But I was... I was kind of flabbergasted and surprised, humble to say the least, that someone would find me worthy to put a photograph on, you know, his personal Instagram with that caption because what had happened was back in 2014, we had the U.S. Open of Surfing here in Huntington Beach, and I was up on the pier doing my political rants as always, and these four young men were in college, and I was telling them, you know, I apologize for my generation ruining their generation's future. And it was up to them to make a change in society. So, you know, we always say each one teach one. So hopefully, you know, maybe some of us, like I I didn't, I didn't know. I guess I did have a positive impact on that young man's life. And I'm glad to see he's out there in Arizona making a difference. I'm not going to publicly embarrass him by naming him on the air. But I want to dedicate this show to him today. And also, Mr. Nelson, um, you know, me, I always have a question for you. Why haven't the um, Democratic Party impeached President Trump yet? I don't know. They must know something we don't want to know, that we know or don't. Well, isn't it like they're saying that you don't um, file criminal okay. charges against a sitting president? Right. But we already That's have presidents say. where a sitting president has had criminal charges filed against them. Which one was that? Well, you had Ulysses S. Grant, you know, who was the general in charge of the Union Army during the Civil War, later became president, and he had a passion for um, riding his horses at excessive speed. And while riding his horse to Washington, D.C. one day, he was, um, I guess you could call it pulled over for lack of a better term, by a police officer in Washington, D.C. who recognized him as being the president, and he gave this, you know, president, traffic violator, a warning. And 24 hours later, <laughs> the same police officers in D.C. and who comes speeding through Washington, D.C. again on horseback was the same President Grant. So this time he said, you know, sir, I gave you a warning yesterday. You come back. Obviously, you didn't learn. So he was arrested for um, speeding, excessive speed in the city limits. And that was done, by the way, by a black police officer by the name of William West. Mm, Anybody can look that one up for yourselves, folks. William West arrested President Grant. So, I mean, we have precedents precedents for having criminal charges filed against a sitting president. And um, Grant ended up paying a $20 fine and never showed up to court for that one. So I just, um, that's what I'm dedicating the show today is that young man who's a teacher in Arizona and to the memory of William H. West. Because, you know, so much of our history, Mr. Nelson, we don't know our own history. And it's amazing how practically every major political controversy in this country is always directly co- de- related to the black folks. Yeah, you want to expound on that one? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, if we're talking about Trump right now being the number one issue, the precedence for having criminal charges filed against the sitting president is directly related to black folks. There was a black man who charged the sitting president with a crime, and nobody contested it. And that was in the 1800s, so why are we talking about that? You know, there is nothing in writing stating that a sitting president can't be um, criminally filed on. So why don't the Democrats do it? <laughs> hey, come on, Mr. Nelson. I told you, listen, before they even had the elections in 2016, I'm old school. And I was taught a long time ago, there are two kinds of people you really never want to end up in bed with. A dead hooker or a live little boy. So I guess there are a whole lot of people on both parties who must have violated that premise because they probably stayed at Trump's hotels and he's probably got cameras of stuff they were doing that they shouldn't have been doing or being with somebody. 
And as he said when he ran for president, you know, during the first primary debates with the Republicans, he said, you see all these other people here on stage, I've given them all money. That way, no matter who wins, if I need a favor, I can come to them for a favor. So let's take that break and get started, sir. All right. 800-450-7876. And speak to Mark from Anaheim. We'll take your calls after this short break on FM 95. Back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. Well, thanks for staying with us, folks. Our guest is Mark from Anaheim. The number to call to speak to Mark is 800-450-7876. Tell a friend and call him up right now and tell him that Mark's on the radio. They really don't want to miss the information that's going to be shared today. Before I take a call, i got to ask you about that that uh, oil tanker that was uh, shot on allegedly today near Iran. Too early to determine if it was a false flag? There's only one, sir. That's, that's what they're telling us. Um, um, I was informed that there were two ships that were attacked in that region. I guess one suffered more damage than the other, but there were supposedly two ships that were attacked. And... Um, Before we get into the tanker, I just want to go back. You had a guest on before I came on, and I know she was talking about mental health, specifically with juveniles. Ms. Nelson, we just had a study here in Los Angeles County. And this study that came out last week, sir, do you know what percentage of juveniles in the juvenile hall detention system right now are suffering from mental health? No idea. Nine, zero percent. Ninety? You heard me correct. Wow. Ninety percent of the young people in juvenile detention halls here in Los Angeles County are suffering from some type of mental health issue. Because that's what we do, sir. We use the, as the sister said earlier, you know, we use the prison system to... um, to answer for what should be done to mental health practitioners, unfortunately. As far as Iran, um, I always wait a couple of weeks until nobody's talking about it anymore, then go back and find out what really happened. You familiar with um, Operation Ajax, Mr. Nelson? No, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, are you familiar with um what they used to call that thing? Arabian let's see, Arabian, Persian No, I remember what they used to call it, the Anglo Anglo Persian Oil Company. You ever, you ever heard of them? No. Well, have you ever heard of British Petroleum? Yeah, BP. Ah, same folks, sir. Um Operation Ajax was an operation back in the fifties. Mossadegh in around 1951 stated that he wanted to nationalize the oil. He couldn't understand why foreigners were getting 80% of the profits from the oil produced in Iran and only 20% was going to the Iranians, so he was going to reverse that. And we couldn't allow that to happen, so Operation Ajax was an organization program where, uh, believe it or not, there are some of the most hardcore um what we would say the mafia in this country, but some of the most hardcore organized criminals in Iran were recruited by um, British intelligence along with U.S. intelligence to go out and create havoc on the streets to paint this picture that Mossadegh was a communist. And that led to the revolution and overthrow of Mossadegh, which brought the Shah on. Once the Shah came in, he no longer called um, Persia, Persia, Iran. So um, that's when the name, like um, Anglo-Persian Oil Company, was changed, and it became um, Anglo-Iranian Oil Company. Of course, later it was renamed British Petroleum. So um, it appears, you know, with your John Birch Society having taken over the White House, having taken over the U.S. Senate, having taken over the U.S. Supreme Court, these folks are going right back and doing the same things they were doing in the 50s and uh, early 60s, sir. Whether that was a false flag or not, I don't have enough information to make that determination. And I just want the listeners out there to remember, for those who've never heard me before, I don't want you to believe anything I'd share with you on the show today. I'm not going to tell you what you might want to hear. I just tell you, I just, I just throw the facts out there. You do your own research, make up your own mind. 
but I'll never come on the show and lie to you and I'll give you misinformation or disinformation. I also won't pretend to know something I don't know. And right now it's too early to make any kind of determination on what really happened, if anything at all happened. Um, you know, we had similar situations like the Gulf of Tonkin, which later on turned out to have not really happened the way we were told. So it's too soon to really state what happened with these two oil tankers in the region. And there were four other tankers uh, back in May that came under similar attacks. But we've served Mr. Nelson. We've had ships attacked like this. I mean, I can't think of any year in my lifetime that we haven't had major um, cargo carrying ships, freight freight ships, oil ships, cargo ships that haven't been attacked similarly. Um, if the information being put out there today is true, supposedly these attacks were conducted using uh, what's called limpid mines. For the listeners out there, that's L-I-M as a Mary, P as in Paul, E. T is in Tom Limpet Mines. And um, of course, you know what country created Limpet Mines, right, Mr. Nelson? No. Which one? <laughs> Great Britain. So Limpet Mines have been around for a long time. Very small, very effective, um, uses magnetic. I grew up in, you know, I spent much, much of my childhood in Charleston, South Carolina. And up until probably the mid to late 80s, Major ships could not even come into the Charleston Harbor without going through what we call a degaussing system. Now, are you familiar with degaussing, Mr. Nelson? Say that, repeat that word again. Degaussing. Degaussing. I, I've heard that word before. Okay, degaussing is basically where when the ship came into Charleston Harbor, it had to be demagnet, demagnetized because, um, believe it or not, we were still having uh, World War II mines that would come into the Charleston Harbor. It's interesting because today um, that major degaussing naval station is now some multi-million dollar home that somebody has bought. So they, they, um, the U.S. Navy and state of South Carolina agreed to sell that property. Um, I think it was back in the 90s, but now it's like some major multi-million dollar mansion on the former degaussing site. Um, as you know, I have a strong naval warfare background, so... I've always been a little disappointed how our mine countermeasure Navy personnel don't really get the attention or the funding they deserve. But even to this day, Mr. Nelson, our mining countermeasure ships are not made from the same material as our other ships to avoid the chance of themselves being um, a conduit for a magnetic mine. Most of our uh, MCMs, as they call it, are made with aluminum and wood hulls. So we still have wooden ships on the water, sir. Yeah, so, I just so if that was indeed um, limpet mines that were used, it's no telling who those came from. I mean, um, I've told your listeners before, back in the 70s, I was seriously considering doing some work work over in Afghanistan when the United States was supporting the Mujahideen. And um, during that time period, sir, we um, <laughs> we provided the Mujahideen with limpet mines, so there's no telling how many limpet mines are in that region. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was just recalling where I knew that from. I went back in the days, the old radio days, we used to use that to uh, win tapes. Re, re, and to, exactly. To, uh, same same, same exact yeah. thing. Same exact thing, sir. In fact, yeah, even to this day on our ships, a lot of our mine countermeasure guys, they're really um, anxious when it comes to electronic devices aboard ship. So if they really believe they're in an active mine area, and I know we do have a fleet that's not too far from when those explosions allegedly happened this week. I would imagine if there are any electronic devices, those guys brought on like smartphones and things like that, sir, guess what they did to them? Same thing. Clean them. Tossed them overboard. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, oh sir, hey, they, they're they hardcore. But, you know, they're, they're like the thankless um, group of people who are in the naval warfare that you don't hear much about. But I have a lot of respect for the mine countermeasure personnel. All right. We got a bunch of folks who want to talk to you already. We do. Well, I do want to take some calls, Mr. Nelson, but I think there was something that you said you wanted me to do. Oh, you know what yesterday was yesterday, Mr. Nelson? What was yesterday? For lack of a, for lack of a better term, oh, yesterday was, was the 20, 25th anniversary of the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. It's hard to believe it's been 25 years. Yeah, it is. 20, and you know why I say it's hard to believe it's been 25 years? Why? Why? Because when all that was going on, you were trying so hard to get me to say things on the radio that I would just not talk about. Like I was yeah. happy because I was happy because during um, 
the latter, I think it was two weeks. Um, well, no, actually, it was a week after the murders, and you were just my phone was ringing off the hook trying to get me to come on. I wasn't going to discuss it, but I ended up getting orders to um, Norfolk, Virginia. So I I got away from you for a month to go to a, um, a mid level Naval Marine Corps officer school up in Little Creek, Virginia. So I was out of town for a month, and then when I came back, for you listeners out there, I wish I was making this stuff up. Mr. Nelson and uh, Stevie wanted to call me at home because um, somebody had presented them with a publication, and you all wanted to have me read this publication before you decided to bring this individual on the show. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember the conversation. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Guys, always trying to get me because I wouldn't talk about it. It was an ongoing investigation, which I didn't know at the time I would be involved in. But it was an ongoing investigation, so I wouldn't discuss it. However, I did read that individual's uh, publication, and I told you I'll definitely bring him on the show because there were things in that publication that I had heard only once in the media and never again. Um, for those out there who don't know, I was referring to it as a book called Blood Oath by uh, William Jasper. And in that book, he tells you about who did it, how they did it, why they did it, and how they even got O.J. Simpson's blood. Mm. I make no I make no comments regarding the veracity of the book. I'm just telling you, it's out there if you look for it. <laughs> I read that book in one night, though. I'm glad, uh, thank God, because it wasn't for Stevie Wonder to give me that book. I probably wouldn't have been able to get a copy back then. It was next to impossible to find a copy back then, but I've been doing a little research since, and you can find it online. There have been people who've contacted me and said they found that book. Very interesting book. Also talks about a group called Cause, the Christian Aryan underground special enforcers who um, have permeated throughout law enforcement, hardcore neo-Nazis, racists. So I just wanted to remind the listeners that you know it's sad because um, Dick Gregory is no longer with us. And now we got a break coming up. So after the break, I'm going to finish what I was going to tell you about Dick Gregory and how we're connected to this tragic murder that happened 25 years ago. Cool. 800-450-7876. You too can... We was... So anyway... um. Because uh, uh, I wanted to talk about the Trump administration's refusal to recognize white supremacist groups as domestic terrorists as well. I'm talking about the homeless. <laughs> but here, I think I hear some scrambling. Oh, there he is. All right, Mark, I'm going to let you finish your thought then. As I mentioned, we've got some folks who want to speak with you. Scary. So anyway, um, you know, it's always funny how all these major things that happen, somehow Dick Gregory and I always connected. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but um, I was later called in by the prosecuting team to um, give my professional opinion on some of the aspects of the case. And when I was presented with, when I was presented with the evidence, I declined to, um, to be a witness for the prosecution. I didn't want to have anything to do with the case. And um, I didn't know it at the time, but um, Dick Gregory had actually um, had contact with William Colby's son. For those who don't know, William Colby was former DCI Director of Central Intelligence who had to testify during the church committee back in the 70s. And um, when we had the Olympics in Atlanta in 1996, just prior to the Olympics, William Colby was found dead in, near the D.C. area. Supposedly he drowned, which to this day I don't believe. But anyway, um, Dick has had conversations with uh, Colby's son about that, and Colby's son believes it was an accidental drowning. Now, the reason I'm mentioning Colby, Mr. Nelson, Guess who was Nicole Brown Simpson's next door neighbor that called nine one one? Who? Colby son. Mm. And um when they actually the barking dog was identified and now remember this is nineteen ninety four. I mean today everybody's like it's no big deal because everybody's doing it now, but the dog was identified because of a microchip. I'm not saying that to you now because believe it or not, you have employers now that are putting microchips in their employees. Artificial intelligence is coming into the plate, Mr. Nelson. We're becoming humanoids. But you actually have employers now who have employees that are putting microchips in underneath their skins. And um, I remember that much of the case I did talk about on your show back in the 90s about the microchip thing, because, you know, Craig Hewlett was also talking about the uh, RFID, the radio frequency identification and that's that's become a major mega billion dollar business today, Mr. Nelson. 
And the reason I'm talking about that is because um, I think you posted something about that not too long ago. And my response was the fact that with the Afghan war and the war in Iraq, many of the wounded warriors coming home today, Mr. Nelson, are being used for all kinds of experimentations on replacing their limbs that have been destroyed by bombs or whatever with uh, cyber cybernetics, cyber genetics and artificial intelligence. So um, the biotic man is real today, Mr. Nelson, far more than it was back in the 90s when Nicole's dog had the microchip. But even back then, Mr. Nelson, I told your listeners that like in the royal families, a lot of very wealthy people, they've been microchipping their children for years. They would go to the dental office and have their children um, implanted with a microchip because they figure if their child was kidnapped, they could always locate that child by um, satellite imagery. Wow, that's deep. I know nothing, so <laughs> <laughs> let's take some calls, man. All right, Kiki's on the line. Oh, no, I'm more. sorry. You had a question for me. Your question was, why doesn't the Trump administration recognize white supremacists as domestic yeah. terrorists? Yeah, yeah, I kind of remember this. I still got sand in my tools. Um, you know, it kind of reminds me, Mr. Nelson. Um, we had the North Hollywood Bank of America shootout back in the mid '90s. Um, I'll never forget that morning because I was on a gun range shooting with LAPD SWAT and um, our SIS team, and um, I stole a, a black and white patrol car that day and ended up escorting much of SWAT and uh, what you call the battle round. We call it the V100 out to the command post during that North Hollywood shootout. But what I do remember before heading down there was um, you had a local news reporter on who was you know, broadcasting live and stated, the suspects are black. And then she had been corrected, and she goes, oh, I'm sorry. The suspects are white, dressed in black. Well, if they're white, they can't be gang members. So what I'm just saying is, is that same mentality is going on today, Mr. Dawson. If they're white, they can't be terrorists. <laughs> no, nothing's changed. And the Trump administration is, is demonstrating that. Hey, white folks, you know, they got, they got mental problems. We're the thugs. We're the terrorists. So I hope, you know, I'm being simplistic and a little flipping here, but hey, I'm just call a spade a spade for no pun intended. So let's take some calls. Man. All right. As I mentioned, Kiki's on line one calling from Iowa. Kiki, you're on with Mark from Anaheim. Oh, and thank you, Mark, for taking my, for taking this question. Um, okay, so I have a question. Now, in Mexico, they just announced um, about this trade war, that we might be getting into trade war with Mexico now. First it was China, um, and then I guess Russia took, um, took China's side or something like that, but it was China, Russia, and now it's Mexico. My whole thing is why um, – and then I'll not mention Hong Kong – um, has recently, there was like an uproar yesterday that the news was not talking about it. It actually resulted in violence when um, they are talking about um, opening or opening up some type of trade to where um, things like um, uh, like security clearances and, and, infra and um, intel intelligence that can be traded too. So my question is, uh, why is it that Mexico didn't like, do something like Stop their trading with America once the 1,200 or 1,300 children were went missing, and I think they still are missing. And why are we going to trade? Why is everybody in a trade war right now? Like, what is going? Like, what is the significance of this? Are they? Is it all smoke and mirrors, just trying to get it hyped up, or is this something that we need to be worried about? It that can eventually lead to a World War Three. Okay, so I love the fact that she kept using the term trade war. One of the things I remember telling your listeners back in the 90s, Mr. Nelson, business is simply warfare without the bloodshed. And sometimes there is bloodshed, but usually not on a major scale. One of the most accurate um, cartoons ever, Mr. Nelson, was the Jetsons. On the Jetsons, all they talked about was sprinkly sparklets and other companies stealing each other's technology and spying on each other. You know, we like to always believe that it's some kind of um, government-related Mr. Nelson, I asked you a question. Name one thing the U.S. government makes. <laughs> the U.S. government? Yeah. Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so when we say we have a trade deficit, is it the U.S. government that has a trade deficit? 
or is it the businesses within the United States that has a trade deficit with businesses in other countries making the similar products? I'd say the second. There it is. So warfare has always been about business. You know, Smedley Butler, General Marine Corps, he said war is a racket. Always has been, always will be. And I've always told you folks, the Marines are nothing but modern-day pirates. We get off the ship, kick your butt, and we take whatever booty that's on the land that we wanted from you that you didn't give to us voluntarily. I'm just gay. I just call a spade a spade for what it is. I'm not telling you I like it. I don't tell you I agree with it. I just tell you the world we live in. That's the world we live in. And folks need to grow up and understand the world they live in and stop living these fantasy dreams about how great we are compared to somebody else. Um, This country was conquered by conquerors, and this country believes in the doctrine of discovery. For those who don't know, back during the times when um, you had the, the, the age of discovery, you had white Europeans that came over here who, for the most part, were Christians, and they were taught that if you weren't a white Christian, you... Are, don't have no value, no human value, you know. So um, it was God's ordained right for white Christians to come to other countries, and if they couldn't transform you into Christianity, then you would get eliminated off the planet. You know, I was saying earlier about 90% of the juveniles in um, L.A. County juvenile halls are suffering some type of mental health issue. Mr. Nelson, do you, you realize they wiped out 90% of the Native indigenous people in this country? I believe that one for a fact. So what I'm just telling you folks, you know, um, that's the world we live in. That's the world that was created. And those folks made money. Those folks didn't just disappear and we went and changed our policy. You know, the uh, 1800s was the British Empire. Basically, the I would say the, the latter 1800s through the 1900s, that was the British Empire. The 20th century, you know, the United States was the empire. Well, now it's time for Asia, China. I was a member of Asia Society. I know what these guys have planned. So when T- and when Kiki talks about this, there's something important she mentioned. Here. She mentioned two countries, that China and Russia. And I've talked to you all before about BRICS. Now, BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. It would only make sense for Donald Trump to be friends with China, to be friends with Russia, because the plan with BRICS is to replace the U.S. dollar is the number one currency in the country. But moments before I came on this show today, Mr. Nelson, guess what was just announced on British Network News? What was that? Guess who now is becoming the more popular currency over the U.S. dollar in Europe? Hmm. The euro dollar. Euro? Yeah, the euro. So now not only do you have to be concerned with China, Russia, South Africa, India, and Brazil, and if you notice, Trump is buddies with Brazil. Trump is buddies with China. Trump is buddy with Russia. That's three out of the five right there. Now we have to be concerned with the European because we haven't really been nice to our allies in Europe lately, especially when it comes to NATO and the United Nations. And a lot of people in Europe right now, they have nothing good to say about our presidency or this administration. So now we may have to worry about the euro being major competition for the U.S. dollar. That will lead to World War, folks. Hold that thought right there. I'll take another short break. Kiki, I thank you for your call. 800-450-7876. Those are the numbers to speak tomorrow from Anaheim. And I'm just staying with us, folks. Our guest is Mark from Anaheim. Before we get back to him, let me remind you, come up next week, you're going to hear from one of our power talkers, Dr. James Small. Also, the Nation of Islam's international representative, Minister Akbar Muhammad, is going to join us. So if you're in the DMV, tell all your friends, keep their radios locked on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. W-O-L. So, Mark, I'm going to let you finish your thought. Well, I did finish my thought on that, Mr. Nelson, but I also want to remind our listeners because I know, well, let me just say this. I went to a memorial service recently for um, a black police officer from LAPD who was murdered back in 1968. And I spoke to several black police officers, some present, some retired. And I asked them if they had ever heard of the Turner Diaries. And I was shocked because only one person in that entire group had ever heard of the Turner Diaries. So let me just remind the listeners, okay? The Turner Diaries were written in 1979. The Turner Diaries is literally the Bible for the Klan and Nazis in this country and white supremacists, white, I hate that term, but that's what they like to call themselves. So the white supremacist movement. 
in the Turner Diaries in 1979, it specifically stated by 1993 they would begin killing white women in West Los Angeles who had betrayed the Aryan race by marrying black men. Now, where was Nicole killed, Mr. Nelson? Brentwood, West L.A. And where is she from? Where's she from? Um, you mean racially? No. We don't use the term race anywhere else except in this country. Where's she from? <laughs> in L.A.? No. She's German. Scandinavian? They're She's German. German. They're all German. They were, they were all living with their mom in Germany, and their mom married a U.S. Army guy who brought them over here. She was blonde hair, blue eye, Aryan from Germany. And who was she married to? O.J. Who was a black male, correct? So, in the Turner Diaries, folks, read it for yourself. It tells you they're going to kill white women in West L.A. married to black men for betraying the Aryan Viking race. By the way, you know, Nicole wasn't the only person killed, right? Who was dating O.J. Simpson, right? Uh, Ron Coleman. No, you're not hearing me. Folks, there was also another blonde-haired, blue-eyed Aryan that O.J. had a romantic relationship with that was killed. They couldn't blame him for that murder because he was already in jail for the, the Nicole Brown Simpson, Ron Goldman murder. Her name is Linda Sobeck. I don't make this stuff up, folks. Look it for yourself. She was a cheerleader for the Oakland Raiders because back then the Raiders were down here in L.A. Linda Sobeck, another one of the Aryan girls of O.J. that was murdered during that time period that we know of. There may be more. So if you look at the Turner Diaries, the Turner Diaries specifically tell you in 1979, mind you, that they were going to blow up a federal building using a fertilizer bomb. Does that sound familiar, Mr. Nelson? It sure does. How they were going to burn predominantly black churches all over the United States. Did that not sound familiar in the 90s, Mr. Nelson? Yes, sir. Even talking about shooting down a jet airliner in New York Harbor. And, you know, I've been on this show since you come on the D.C. station, where I still challenge KTLA here in Channel 5 in L.A. because I have a copy of that tape where they bragged about how they had a breaking story. And on that breaking story, they showed you on a Saturday night a missile going up and hitting a jetliner. And then it was never said on the television again. But see, back in those days, I used to tape the television news live. I don't watch television anymore, but... There was a family having a barbecue, and they were videotaping their barbecue in their backyard, and there's that missile going up and hitting the jet line. Of course, later on, they told you it was something else that caused the jet line to come down. You can't make this stuff up, Mr. Nelson. So the Turner Diary is out there, folks, and these folks are literally carrying out what's in the Turner Diaries. They have another one called Serpent Walk. You know, back in those days, Mr. Nelson, I used to use so many different aliases, so I was on a lot of mailing lists for um, subversive organizations, and they would send me their documentation. But, yeah, and the Turner Diaries now, it's next to impossible to buy one because since Trump's been in the White House, they've been reprinting that book over and over again. That's one of the top-selling books in this country, and you don't even hear about it. So you folks do a little research, the Turner Diaries or Serpent's Walk, major for the, the the neo-Nazi movement in this country that has just grown since the Negro got elected in 2008 and has uh, has grown exponentially since um, Donald Trump came out and says we got, you know, good and bad on all sides. We can move on, sir. All right. 800-450-7876. Man 2 is next. Calling from New York is on line 2. Man 2, you have a question for Mark? Yes, yes. Uh, greetings, Carl. Greetings, uh, Mark. Yes, uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good A couple of things. Um, one has been the uh, killings of politicians, not only in the United States, but also overseas in Germany. There's a guy named Lubick, L-U-B-C-K-E, shot. I don't think that case has been solved. Then you had two politicians five hours away from each other by driving. Um, one in Oklahoma, one in uh, Arkansas. Two state senators were killed. One was a former state senator, a female. I think her name was 
something related to Pocahontas. I'm not sure. Then there was another guy, Nichols or Nicholson, and, uh, who was killed. And then uh, the thing that made me even more scratch my head was that uh, Hillary Clinton's brother died just, you know, without any details on how he died. And then there was a protest, massive protest in Haiti. And he was tied to the exploitation of Haiti's uh, resources with the gold mine. So uh, just a couple of things. Are these things, uh, how can politicians be killed without any leads or any, uh, you know, how can these be cold cases? And then uh, was uh, Tony Rodman, uh, Hillary's brother, the fall guy or the front man or the instigator behind those deals where, you know, things were being exploited uh, in Haiti? And I have a follow-up question. Well, when it comes to Haiti, um, I personally had been offered $18,000 a month to go down to Haiti in the aftermath of the earth, the major earthquake they had down there. And I refused to go down there and take any of that blood money, and I thought it was a slap in the face of the people of Haiti. When um, Clinton was president and we were in Bosnia and Serbia, we were part of the United Nations peacekeeping forces, and the idea of sending Italian troops into Somalia or Ethiopia is absurd because the Italians occupied Ethiopia and Somalia during World War II. Well, you come now to Haiti with the earthquake. The idea of sending Bill and Hillary Clinton to Haiti was a slap in the face to the Haitian people because the Haitians remember how the United States government invaded Haiti while Bill Clinton was in the White House. And, of course, later on, um, Hillary's brother got the contract to mine the gold out of Haiti, and to this day you still have protesters in Harlem and other places from Haiti who complain how their families didn't ever get any financial aid because that money had been siphoned off into various um, Clinton Foundation funding or whatever. There's a lot going on in Haiti and Dominican Republic right now, and very little of it is being covered by U.S. media. Um, You have major mercenaries, oh, I'm sorry, private contractors down there basically doing police work in Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic, and when they get apprehended by the local law enforcement because they are private contractors, it's like they have a pass to do whatever they want. They're out there abusing the rights of, well, in Haiti, when you say the word right, that's kind of a weird term anyway. But what I'm just saying is um, these guys are acting with impunity. So I don't know any specific details and the circumstances behind the death of Hillary's brother because very little has been released. But I will say, going back to your question, though, about the politicians, sir, it was happening before now. You would not, well, I guess you would believe, but it's amazing how many judges in this country were dying from being hit by cars and hit and run or being found dead in rivers in New York during the time up um, just, I would say, the last um, 19 to 23 months prior to the 2016 election. It's like there's a purge going on, and it's not confined to politicians. Um, Journalists are being killed. I wish I could uh, tell you I'm making this up. Okay, let me just give you one example. In fact, I'm I'm, I'm going to refrain from saying her name on the telephone, and you'll understand why when I say this. Just last week, and I know the individual is listening to the show right now, Mr. Nelson, I asked somebody on Facebook about a black journalist from Africa who was in her hotel room, suddenly started having convulsions, she died, and I'm very suspicious about that sudden death. First thing that comes to my mind is food poisoning, and this happened back in April. To this day, there still hasn't been any autopsy report telling us what the circumstances of her death. So I jokingly said to this individual, why did your buddies kill blank, blank, Mr. Nelson? Seconds after I sent that message on Facebook, do you know I was I was booted off Facebook? And the individual who I sent that message to, all messages I had sent to him prior disappeared off his Facebook, which is why I'm not telling you the name of this individual. Um, so I know some of you who are listening know what I'm talking about because I did post her photograph the night she was – announced dead and I was I was I was very upset because she's one of the few individuals in journalism, especially on the continent of Africa. She does she was the real deal. I find it a little sad though because for her to be doing the real deal, the news network over there that she was working for is owned by a Chinese company. It's amazing how much influence China has now in the continent of Africa. 
But um, that's what's going on. I mean, there was a woman I had a lot of respect for who was telling the truth about the financial dealings of the major oligarchs around the world, including the royal family, and um, she blew up in a car bomb and over in Malta. I, I can't even keep track. Well, a lot of it's not being reported. I can't even keep track of how many journalists around the world who are still doing real investigative journalism who are now dead within the last 18 months. In fact, one was killed live on Facebook down in Brazil. I believe it was Brazil. I could be mistaken on that one. But I know it was down in uh, South America. Live on Facebook and was murdered. That's what's going on, sir. So um, it appears to be, there appears to be a purge going on. But I can't get into specifics about any of the individual murders, especially one with uh, Hillary's brother, because I don't, I don't have any information on that. And you had a follow-up question, sir? Yeah, um, two quick ones. Uh, there was two people supposedly who set themselves on fire near the White House, so across from the White House. Now, usually when people, quote-unquote, set themselves on fire for a political statement, um, is there something going on that we are not privy to because it's not being reported? Or was this some type of experiment with some of the user technology or Yabba yabba, you know what I'm saying, Jackson style, uh, double oh seven type of thing, and they were just test these just happened to be uh un- unknown guinea pig. But uh, why would people be setting themselves on fire near or across from the White House if not to make a political statement? Is there another movement about that we're not aware of? And then lastly, um I'm concerned about uh, among other things, the death of black uh, military uh, personnel that's going underreported. Um, once again, no one knows how they were, that, you know, who killed them. And uh, because many of us may have disagreements with the policies of the United States, nevertheless, I think we should be aware of who's being killed. And then also, you know, the women who are being raped, black women especially, who are being raped in the military. And, you know, this makes me wonder what's going on in addition to what you said about a purge. And I'll take the answers over there. Have a great All right. I'm going to try to do this where the listeners have a chance to call in here today because I know everybody's going to try to sandbag me with one question, but it's ended up being 12 questions. Let's talk about being set on fire. Um, and now we got a break coming up, so I'll, bring, I'll answer that after the break. All right, cool. 800-450-7876. You too can speak to Mark from Anaheim. We'll take your phone calls after this short break right here on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. I have the strangest... So it's sad and tragic. Welcome to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450 WOL Radio and live around the world on WOLDCnews.com. Thank you for staying with us, folks. Six o'clock straight up on the East Coast. Our guest is Mark from Anaheim. Most of you know Mark's not his real name. It's real enough from Anaheim, but that's a whole nother story. Anyway, Mark, I'm going to let you finish your response uh, from Clinton's set of questions. Yeah, during that break, Mr. Nelson, I went and checked. Um, that, that journalist was actually killed live on uh, Facebook in the Dominican Republic. So you can, it's out there on the internet for you, because so, I know a lot of folks out there are researchers. So. Um, Sadly, I, I wish I was making it up. Um, as far as being set on fire, fanatics will do anything. I'm not going to sit here today and speculate about somebody being some uh, mind control, you know, similar to MK Ultra, or being programmed to go out and do something. Um, you know, we had Buddhist monks who set themselves on fire in Vietnam, and there are some people out there, Mr. Nelson, who are really um, when it comes to climate change and global warming, they're, they're religious zealots. You got some environmentalists out there who are hardcore religious zealots, you know, just like the hardcore vegans. So, um, I, I, you know, having been a cop for 24 years in the Marine Corps and seeing what I've seen, um, nothing surprises me anymore. So it's sad and tragic that those um, deaths occurred. I mean, the fact that it happened at the White House is only to get publicity for it, but um, it's not just happening there. Suicide is suicide, and that's just that was somebody who may have decided they wanted to commit suicide and go out where they would be remembered. I mean, there could all be be all kinds of reasons for it. And as far as the rapes in the military, um, I run a site for women 
that I dedicate to women in uniform, those who are armed forces, firefighters, law enforcement, and nurses. And Mr. Nelson is sad because here I am a guy running a site for women, and I have women sharing their stories with me because they don't trust anybody else to um, to share their stories with, and some of their stories are horrific. And also, you know, there's a young lady who I will know for forget her memory, LaVita Johnson, a black female, U.S. Army, who was raped, set on fire, and they called it suicide. She was murdered. You know, she's raped and burned to death, and they call that a suicide. And uh, murderers have never been um, prosecuted. So um, I, I, I can't give you the accurate statistics right now, but I think, unless I'm mistaken, there's something like a minimum of 37% of the women who served overseas stated that they had been the victim of some type of sexual assault. It's pretty high, and those are the ones that's reporting. And most of them won't report it because, Mr. Nelson, when you report it, a lot of the women end up being um, prosecuted by their command. Mm. We live in a sick society. These are the guys we all, you know, thank you for your service. I, I, please don't ever tell me that crap. I hate that. Thank you for your service crap. But I'm just telling you, just because somebody wears a uniform does not make somebody a hero. A lot of these guys in the military, as they call it, because I use the term armed forces or services, even though it's supposed to be illegal to do this, you got judges in small town America who love, and I don't even use that term, small town United States who love to give criminals the choice of going to jail or going in the armed forces. So, of course, they go in the armed forces. So you you have criminals before they ever put that uniform on. And since they didn't go to jail or prison, they didn't learn from what they had done that was a crime back in their hometown. You get a lot of criminals wearing uniform. Let's move on, sir. 800-450-7876. Hector is next. Hector is on line three, calling from Maryland. Hector, you're on the market. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Thank you. Um, for the opportunity um, to ask you a question, um, Mark, I'm hearing what you're saying, and um, you. It seems like, well, not it seems it is apparent. You know a lot of stuff that could actually get you get you in trouble. Is why you using my alias right now, and I, it, like, it, I, I thank you for the titles of those books because you know I'm gonna go search them out, and the reason why is because. Um, I see what's going on with uh, in the black and Latino, and also we got to include the Native American Indian communities today, how we're being affected by what's going on with this Trump administration and him opening up the gates for the rest of the supremacists to move forward with their agendas. Uh, and I know you, I just heard you say you don't like to use the, the term white. Am I correct? No, I said I don't like to use the term military, and I don't like to use the term America because one, no, the military. Earlier, mili- sir, earlier, with, earlier, you said. No, I, I don't like don't to really use like the term. To- I don't like to use the term white supremacy because that okay. implies that they're supreme. So I don't use that term. Right, and but in their mind, they do feel like they're supreme. But that's I, I got a better term. I got a better term, and this one that's in, it's biblical. It's called the devil because that's. Who really they well, are. Hector, do us a favor. Can you body. put in a question for him? We got a bunch of folks got questions yeah, for right, us. So this is, this is, this is, this is leading up to a question. My question is: um, Is there a um, a site where I can also go read and study to get certain information? Because I do street speaking, um, and Mr. Nelson, uh, this one's for you. I, I also wanted to find out if you have an email address because I would like. See if you would invite the organization that I deal with on your show to speak uh, to the tone of what is going on with these murderers being these murders being committed by law enforcement individuals, you know, openly and not caring. Like for instance, that sister that got shot that says she was pregnant in Texas, and clearly, like even the, just telling the person like that, I'm pregnant, <clears throat> was to no effect. Um, so, if, Mr. Mark, if you do have a site or sites that I can look into, uh, you know, I would greatly appreciate if you do have one. All right. So, um, thank you for the question, Mr. Uh, Hector. Um, I don't run on blogs and I don't do websites. However, I, I do have a, a, 
I do have a Facebook site that's called Mark from Anaheim, Palooka Sarcasm 101. I know a lot of people have gone to the group site. You know, Facebook got away from group sites for a while, so I had to create a fan page, and I update that hourly. I mean, seriously, and people will tell you, well, Facebook tells you the response time. I try to respond to most people, but the, my response time right now is average is two hours. So I do get back to you when you send me questions or inquiries. But Mark from Anaheim, Political Sarcasm 101. Since I never sleep, Political that's what sarcasm. Else Mark from Anaheim, Political Sarcasm 101 on Facebook. Go to the fan page, not the group site. But I, I monitor them both because people still ask to join the group site, but I keep telling them to go to the fan page. Okay. Um, can, I do, can I draw one more little um, thing that you probably already know this, what I'm about to say. This is something that I found out um, <clears throat> back in the 90s. Uh, it was a videotape that I saw. It was recorded by a, a Fox News reporter back in the day. Um, <clears throat> well, at the time, he worked for Fox. Prior to that, I don't know the TV station that he worked for at the time, but this was during the Kennedy era. And in that day, he was one of several reporters filming the uh filming the the car you know passing by and uh, just right there to when we see he got shot right um in the footage that I saw you could clearly see the close up of the driver there was a there was a passenger to the right of the driver of course he grabs the steam wheel while the driver turns around and shoots Kennedy right in the head is that your question sir no, I'm just telling you that. It, yeah, I just wanted to know if that's something that you also know. All right, thanks, Hector. Thanks for your call. Mark, you want to deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, Mr. Nelson. Um, I worked for a colonel. This guy had 43 years of Marine Corps. As myself, he was a Mustang, you know, prior enlisted before colonel officer. And this guy took me out to Texas one time with him on a special assignment where we were teaching some Marines at an undisclosed base. And then he takes me out to dinner. And then while we're at dinner, he goes, so tell me everything you know about the JFK assassination. And I'm looking at him like, okay, now this gentleman is old enough to be my father, if not grandfather. I was only six years old when Kennedy was assassinated. And he's asking me. And then I realized he's not the only only one. People are always coming and asking me about what do I know about the Kennedy assassination. So I told him. And it wasn't a driver to shot Kennedy. Um, I guess you want you want me. I was only six years old when Kennedy was assassinated, and he's asking me. And then I realized he's not the only one. People are always coming and asking me about what do I know about the Kennedy assassination. So I told them, and it wasn't a driver to shot Kennedy. I guess you want, you want me to give you a little bit more follow-up on what happened that day on 22 assassinated. And he's asking me. And then I realized he's not the only one. People are always coming and asking me about what do I know about the Kennedy assassination. So I told him. And it wasn't a driver to shot Kennedy. Um, I guess you want, you want me to give you a little bit more follow-up on what happened that day on 22 November, Mr. Nelson? Yeah. He ain't leaving. So you got a constitutional crisis on your hands pretty soon. But what I'm saying to you is um, the same players involved back then are still around. And I just give you one name. You folks act like you don't know who Mitch McConnell is. Do some research. Mitch McConnell was part of the Warren investigation, the Warren Commission investigation. See if I'm making that up. William Barr, please. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how far back William Barr goes, especially with uh, boys on, in Langley. And he worked under under Daddy Bush when Daddy Bush was DCI. These guys didn't come out of nowhere. These are the same players that were involved in Iran Contra. That's why I started doing radio shows. And now they're back, and this time they're using private funding, and Congress can't even investigate them because they won't be using taxpayers' money. Wow. Thank you. Coming up on a break. Uh, <laughs> How much of that did you hear, Mr. Nelson? Uh, not much. I got knocked off. <laughs> okay. I don't know but, if your you listeners know. heard it. 
Yeah, I hope they did. <laughs> this happens when you're on, but, you know, they're asking what happened. I knocked up. 800-450-7876 to speak to Mark from Anaheim. We've got to take a short break, folks. We'll take a call next. You got kicked off, Mr. Nelson, but I'm going to ask you the question. When Bill Clinton was impeached, did he leave the White House? No, he didn't. So why, is, why are folks acting as if Donald Trump is all weird because he said he's not going to leave if he's impeached? Impeaching somebody does not mean they have to leave. So you can impeach Trump and he's going to stay. Why is everybody acting all crazy? Clinton did it. Oh, I get it. You folks like Bill Clinton. So when Bill Clinton got impeached and stayed, it's okay. <laughs> okay. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Anyway, um, what I was saying earlier, Mr. Nelson, was the fact that um, I challenged the listeners out there to name me just one person who's a key member of Trump's administration that is not a member of the John Burr Society. And these are the same folks that put up all the billboards around the country calling Martin Luther King a communist. These folks are still around. Mitch McConnell, he was part of the Warren Commission investigation, folks. That's why when Trump talked all this smack about releasing the files, how come the files haven't been released yet, Mr. Nelson? The gatekeepers are still here, <laughs> okay? William Barr is a gatekeeper, too. <laughs> William, Gar- William Barr has got long ties to um, Langley, Virginia. <laughs> and um, he worked he worked under Daddy Bush when Daddy Bush was DCI, and then later on when Daddy Bush became um, vice president, and then... Heading into the presidency, it was Barr that suggested to Daddy Bush to pardon all the Iran-Contra criminals who were all John Burr Society, Ali North and all those boys, John Burr Society. The mistake they made back in those days was they used taxpayers' money. They don't need tax- taxpayers' money now. you got John Burr Society Mercers, John Burr Society Koch brothers. These folks are so wealthy with their vast funds that they can use private funding, and Congress can't even investigate them because it's not going to be using taxpayers' money. That's where we are. So as far as some driver shooting Kennedy, uh, you guys keep believing that. <laughs> that ain't the way it went down. But I will just tell you this. Some of the players are gone, but some of the gatekeepers are still here. So you folks, come on, call back and say Mark's lying, that Mitch McConnell was on the Warren Commission investigating team. You folks got to do your homework. These folks on Capitol Hill didn't just get there from nowhere. Go back and find out who they were. You know, like Barbara Boxer when she was involved with Jim Jones, <laughs> Diane Feinstein, all these folks. <laughs> hey, they they know where the bones are buried. That's, you, you don't get on dirty Capitol Hill unless you're dirty. That's why nothing's going to happen to Trump. So I'm going to ask you today, Mr. Nuss, before we take the next question, because I asked you this six months after President Trump swore in. Name me one person right now who could beat Trump if Trump was running for president today. Nobody. There it is. And for all you folks talking about Michelle Obama, please, you guys don't have a clue how much dirt's out there on Michelle Obama that if she was stupid enough to run for office, that would come out. Just let those dogs lie, go build your library, and enjoy the money you make. When they were in the White House, Mr. Nelson, they finally paid off their student loans. That's how poor the Obamas were. You think they're going to screw it up by getting back into politics? Take the money, go away quietly, enjoy your children becoming adults. Let's take another call. <laughs> Before we do that, you mentioned yes, uh, uh, William Barr and Mitch McConnell. Don't they have yeah. some history? Yeah, like I said, Mitch McConnell was on the Warren Commission investigative team. He's one of the boys back in the early days who was helping to bury the bones, so to speak, and to draft and write a Warren Commission report that was palatable to release to the public that wasn't telling you much of anything. And as far as Barr goes, Barr... Um, if you all want an idea of Mitch McConnell and William Barr and who, what circles they ran in, go back and watch the movie with Burt Lancaster called Executive Action. Go back and do some research on people like the Hunt brothers. Go back and do some research and see who from the Hunt family is married to certain people on Capitol Hill right now. And for all you Fox listeners today, I still have that question for you. You know, Murdoch was the number one owner. A Saudi Muslim is the number two owner who funds terrorists and who built the mosque at Ground Zero 
and Fox, you know, they gave more money to Obama than anybody else running in 2012. But Mr. Nelson, here's the latest one, because I know a lot of your listeners don't follow this. Murdoch's no longer married to the Chinese wife, who is probably a spy. You know who she's dating now? No, who's she dating? Vladimir Putin. <laughs> you folks Get have no here. idea what's going on. <laughs> Come Wendy on. Something? I'm sorry? Yeah, you know, Wendy, I, I ain't gonna, hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. I used to have the hot for Wendy, man. Maybe I was mad that she married that old white boy, but no, Wendy was hot, man. <laughs> and she's but, not yeah. dating her Putin. Yeah. Wow. Come on, I challenge somebody to call in and say I'm lying. <laughs> you know, the reason I, you know why I always say that, Mr. Nelson, because see, when you and I used to do radio shows in the '90s, your listeners would call me a liar because we didn't have the internet. But see, I already know people are right now typing away, going, "Damn." <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, sir. Wendy, I still okay. have the hots for you. Eight hundred four five zero seventy eight seventy six. Mayhem's got a question for you. He's on line four. He's calling from Indiana. Mayhem, you're on with from Anaheim. Hey, Mark, uh, how's it going? Hey, bro, how you doing, man? Hey, pretty good. You on fire, man? You can just drop the mic now. I mean, how many times <laughs> you got to keep telling the people? The same thing in a different way. It, 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 it's over. It's a wrap. Hey, I want to ask you, because uh, you keep on mentioning your friend, Ali North. When he was down here, what was his what was his deal doing with the NRA? Because he's a, he's a second white man that I know that, that came to Indiana. They chased him out of town. Uh, Billy Graham came back down here. He tried to talk about racism. They put him on the plane pack, and he never came back. <laughs> Ali North was trying to... Ollie North, Ollie North was trying to uh, do something, but they put him on a plane pack, and I, I don't think he had never come back. You know, the Midwest, as you said, the Midwest runs the White House. Um, what? I don't know who it is, but it's very structured down here, but they're all around the White House. Who really who really runs the, the Midwest? And is, is, is Trump, has, has Trump got in something that he really can't get out of? Because it seems like he's on both sides of the track. You, if you know what I mean, and I take it up there. Thank you. Now, Mr. Nelson, um, I wanted to go back to something earlier that was said by Hector because, you know, in addition to our women being disrespected in armed forces, the number of black women, the number of brown women, and I'm including indigenous Native Americans as well as Latinas, that are being murdered or disappearing in this country is just unbelievable. For you folks out there who are serious researchers, Mayhem is from Ohio, okay? Mr. Nelson, what state does the Republican have to win if he or she is going to become president in this country? Oh, they got to Ohio and one in Pennsylvania, I guess the other one. Oh, and, and are they not neighbors? Are they not next door to each other? <laughs> right. So for you folks out there, Here's one for you. One of my all-time favorite law enforcement officers. You know, in the old days, Mr. Nelson, Marines used to guard the trains. You were you aware of that, right? Right. Because that's how bad it was. People used to rob trains all the time. And the probably the greatest postal inspector of all time was a man named Frank Oldfield. For you folks that are researchers, O-L-D-F-I-E-L-D. Frank Oldfield was the postal inspector who went after the mafia. Trust me, Gayaga Hoover didn't do much. In fact, Gayaga Hoover never acknowledged that organized crime existed in the U.S. because he was dirty as hell. Part black, too. Um, if you all folks want to know who ran things, you know, we always talk about New York. We talk about Chicago. And even out here in San Francisco, L.A. with the mob, folks, trust me, if you want to know who the mob is, and I think Mayhem was being rhetorical when he asked this question. Mayhem was one of the sharpest people, Mr. Nelson, you ever have come on your show. Folks, do some research into what was called the Ohio Black Hand. The Ohio Black Hand. That's the old school mafia out of places like Cleveland, but more importantly, small towns, places like Mahonic Valley, M-A-H-O-N-I-G Valley. God, it's scary that I even remember all this stuff. I need to go back and coach my little white girls in surfing. You guys are going to get me in trouble. So you go back and do some research on the mafia in Ohio, and you'll realize these guys like Anastasia and Gardy and all those guys are nothing 
compared to the mob out of Ohio, which is why you still got to win Ohio to become the president of the United States. And as far as Donald Trump goes, they got so much dirt on Donald Trump. Donald Trump does what he's told. Presidents do not run this country. And as soon as Donald Trump thinks he's running things, then all that dirt they have always had on him, they'll get rid of him and put Pence in because that's what they wanted anyway. So I hope that helps answer your question, Mayhem. But I think Mayhem already knew the answer anyway. <laughs> and as far as the Billy Graham thing and Ollie North, um, snakes tend to eat themselves. And right now you have a major war going on. Because, see, the NRA is not the biggest gun lobbyist group. They're not the most powerful. In fact, a lot of the, I mean, the far right-wing fringe elements who want to get guns to keep the Negroes down, the NRA is not, is not far enough to the right for them. And um, there's some major infighting going on within that organization. All right. Let's, let's move call. on, sir. Yeah. 800-450-7876. Marilyn's calling us on line six from the district. Marilyn, you're on, you have a question for Mark from Anaheim. Yes, hi, thank you. I would like to know what your opinion is on Dominican Republic. Well, oh couple God, of the most beautiful women in the world come from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> Why are there all of a sudden these murders there and of Americans? Also, the um, Nipsey hustle, was that a hit? Because possibly the rap he made about Donald Trump, and um, they were laughing at Fox News and referring to that. Also, um, the body parts, where are they going? Are they going to make these humanoids with all these people disappearing? All right, Dominican Republic. Um, as I stated earlier, there's a lot going on right now in Haiti and Dominican Republic, and the media is not covering up. Um, when when Clinton administration sent the U.S. armed forces down into Haiti, it was because the Haitians had refused to work in those mines. So they brought in people from the Dominican Republic, but it wasn't enough people to continue doing the mining for these European companies that own those mines down there. So we sent the U.S. Army down there to, you know, put the Negroes back in place and get them back in the mines. The number one export at that time out of Haiti was bauxite. Bauxite's used to make aluminum. And we use aluminum for a lot of things in this country. So, you know, that was a vital uh, mineral resource that we couldn't allow them to stop the, the trains from running kind of thing. The Dominican Republic doesn't get as much attention as many of the other countries in that region. And um, I'm sad to say that I keep trying to do research. I have a lot of service from different areas, but I don't have any service from that particular area of Dominican Republic. And believe it or not, Ms. Nothing, there's some waves in Haiti. I don't have any service from Haiti or Dominican Republic, so I haven't been um, able to keep up on what's really going on in that region. And now we got another break, so I'm going to finish your question after the break, sir. All right, 800-450-7876. Speak to Mark. Your call's next on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. W-O-L, where information is... 14 W-O-L Radio. Thanks for staying with us, folks. Our guest is Mark from Anaheim. And again, the number to call to speak to him is 800-450-7876. I'm putting a question for him, please, so he can respond. So, Mark, I'll let you finish <laughs> responding to Marilyn's questions. I have a question for you, Mr. Nelson. So have you ever heard of the Ohio Black Hand Mafia? No, I have not. And you've heard the term organized crime before, right? Right. So during the break, I did a little research. And according to recent historians, organized crime began in Ohio. <laughs> so while you folks sit there and talk about, you know, New York and New Jersey and these other folks, People have no idea why Ohio is so influential when it comes to politics. It's always been dirty, folks. See, the only difference between Trump and guys before Trump, Trump has eliminated the middleman. That's why a lot of people actually, they don't necessarily like him. And I don't even know if using the term respect is a proper term, but they appreciate him for being as candid as he is. He's just doing what everybody else did without putting a cherry on it and making you feel good about it. I've told many of the listeners out there to see the movie Bullworth. And in that movie, Warren Beatty was trying to get out of politics, so he said, screw it. He was just going to be honest with the voters and told them what they really thought. He didn't care about blacks and all this. And guess what? People were so happy to hear the truth, they went out and voted and tried to put him back in office. He was winning by a landslide. And that's basically what Trump's doing. Trump has seized the moment where there's so many frustrated people in this country 
that he sees the moment and and telling the people what they want to hear, even though even though they know he's not going to deliver on it. As far as Nipsey Hussle, I will not discuss that murder. Um, that's all I'm going to. I'm not going to discuss that murder. Well, I'll say this much. I will say this much. Yes. All right, Marilyn, I'm going to let you go because we got a bunch of folks got questions and you've. you've Got in three, but I thank you for your call. But uh, what I just say about what I'll say about <laughs> Nipsey is what I'll say about Nipsey is um, I've talked to a whole bunch of people on the streets, and um, I was happy to see Chris Darden go. I say I leave it at that. <laughs> as far as body parts, that's nothing new. We've always used the uh, mental hospitals, armed forces, and the poor to do experimentations, and um, I don't. Well, I know you have sponsors on the show. Um, what I say on this show is me. I don't represent anybody else. I don't put on my damn driver's license organ donor because black folks don't usually get those organs, and somebody makes major money off of those organs, and your family's not going to get any of their money for your body parts being given to some wealthy person who doesn't look like you. Let's move on, sir. <laughs> 800-450-7876. Christian's on line two calling from Malibu. Hey, how you guys doing? Damn, Malibu. Nazi. Yeah, yeah. Open, yeah uh, w- check this out. Wealth, uh, wealthy, 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 wealthy Nazi land. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, somebody's got to do it. Gypsy Hustle is being held at 77th Division on the south side, on the 77th side street in uh, restricted quarters. Just so you know. All right. Uh, uh, and and that's why I'm not discussing this, sir. <laughs> uh, now, Trump ran on the platform of uh, immigration. He was going to get uh, all the illegals, all the doctor people out. And then in the last couple of months, he's quadrupled the complete number, which is total opposite what he's going to do. So I said the only thing that could make sense that I can understand is that they're going to let all these illegals in, so they have to be part of the military in order to get citizenship. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense because you would be stopping them. What do you think about that? Well, sadly, as you know right now, um, there are many children who are unaccounted for because they were separated from the parents. Newt Gingrich was the only one honest enough to come out and talk about it. Newt Gingrich was trying to get legislation passed to eliminate child labor laws in this country. They want slave labor folks. And right now, many of those children who have been separated from their families are suspected of being, working in the fields in various, especially in Texas. So, um, so much as far as armed forces go, we have people right now. I mean, heck, even in the, in the 80s, I was in charge of a platoon up at 29 Palms in the 80s where out of my platoon, I think maybe seven people were born in the United States. So, I mean, having foreign people in the armed forces is nothing new. And yet many of these people get deported after serving because they thought they were going to get to citizenship and they weren't. I know there's been this cry to to serve like in the movie Starship Troopers kind of thing where basically the draft kind of thing is going to come back where you have to do some kind of like Peace Corps or something. But what I'm telling you is it's not really about that, folks. It's about having cheap labor. It's always been about having cheap labor. So if you guys want an idea what their plan is, who they idolize, who they want to be like, and by the way, who was featured throughout this documentary, no one other than Donald John Trump, Go back and see the history channels. They built America where they idolized the robber barons. There's a term for you folks to do some research on robber, just like robbery. Robber barons. Today they don't Hold call on. them robber barons. I'm sorry? Hold on. Today uh, California um, is going with a $214 billion initiative where they're going to pay for all the illegal aliens' uh, health care. So that's now, never going to pass. Keep, that's that's never going to pass. This is the kind of stuff well, that's he, thrown out there to get the white folks all upset, knowing that's never going to pass. Well, we're going to see because tomorrow's a deadline. We'll find out tomorrow about this time. But what I'm saying is, who's going to pay for that? All the people coming in, who's going to pay for all that? This is the kind of hyperbole they always use to get you. This is how they get us to divide and conquer. They did the same thing saying this about black folks back in the early days, telling white folks that blacks were taking their jobs. Now they got us believing that these folks are taking our jobs. I'm telling you, these things aren't going to happen. This is one world, okay? 
I came on the show with Mr. Nelson back in the 90s when nobody even knew what they were, and I talked about general agreements on tariffs and trade, GATT. I talked about the G7, which, of course, today is far greater. When you have the Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation, when you have the European Union, the United mm-hmm. States will not survive if we don't band together with Canada and Mexico and make this one region. You folks can cry and whine all you want, but if you want to still live the lifestyle you live in, you need to get rid of the damn borders, both in the north and the south, and we that's the only way we're going to compete against the Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation. I know I was a member of the Asian Society. I know what their plans are, and they plan on ruling in the 21st century. And as long as we keep dividing ourselves, talking about Mexicans coming across the border, we go down there and screw all these countries like Venezuela, Brazil, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, El Salvador. We screw those people, and then they have no place left to go, so they try to come here. And now we want to stop them from coming here? Find out why the hell they're trying to come here in the first place. Because most of those people aren't coming from Mexico. They're coming through Mexico. Stop believing the hype, do some research, and stop repeating the hyperbole. That law for California is never going to pass. All right. Well, Thank we'll you, find man. out. We especially disagree. You guys have a nice day. All right. He's, he's, he said it before. Uh, dude, I've been in the trenches on this. Co- Mr. Dose, I'll never forget the time. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'll never forget the time. You had list- two listeners came on your show talking about Prop 187, and I told them, I said, you guys don't even realize the psychological warfare involved. That's why they call it Prop 187, and how they were going to say, English only in the school systems. And I came on your show and said, Dick Riley has already told me that's never going to pass because that's a federal law. And your listeners didn't even know who Dick Riley was. And Dick Riley was the Secretary of Education at the time. I knew Dick Riley. I'm from South Carolina. This is what happens. You guys are being fed a bunch of crap, and you go back out and repeat it without doing your own personal research. I will never come on this show and lie to you. If you want to believe what you want, don't bother calling in and asking me because you ain't going to change my mind. I right. won't talk about something I don't already know. Well, Christina, we thank you for your call because we've got a bunch of other folks that uh, want to speak to right, you. We've had that Christian. conversation with Christian before, but, you know, he's still concerned. He lives in Malibu. That's, uh, so, uh, yeah, Guadalupe. he lives in Malibu. Let me, folks, let me tell you all about Malibu. Malibu is where all the girls from the Manson family came from. That's Nazi land, okay? Trust me, I can't live in Malibu and sound like I'm black. Okay, please. Malibu? <laughs> See how the sheriff treats you over there. Ask them about the sister that got killed over there, probably by a Malibu deputy, and to this day nobody's done any time for it. And Obama didn't do a damn thing about her murder. Please. Yeah. But, and, you know, we've had the con- a conversation with Christian before, and he, he thought he won. He's, he's scared about the immigrants, the lady who can't speak English. who's just come over from San Ysidro. He's going to make it all the way up the five, up the Pacific Coast Highway to Malibu and, and take his job. Dude, or take the most home. racist female <laughs> service i got to deal with when I'm out there are girls from Malibu. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. some of them but are listening you know, to the show right now. Malibu is where all of no, seriously, Malibu is where very wealthy <laughs> Nazi Germans from World War II relocated. They relocated to Malibu, Pacific Palisades, and they love those areas. <laughs> Come but on, man. It's not so much the areas, Mark. It's, it's that he's regurgitating stuff that he hears on, on the Fox News echo chamber. And I know it, and I hear him because it's the same t- talking. And by the way, for you folks who are not familiar with Malibu, yeah. just Google this one. Malibu high school sex scandals and see how they treat the girls, not just the few blacks that go there, but see how they treat the white girls there. They already teach them misogyny from day one at Malibu high school. I got no love for Malibu. Sorry. <laughs> right. We're kind of on a break. Let's see if we can get some more calls in. We However, I didn't want it to burn. Country. I'll say that much. I, I was sorry that they burned. I want to speak with you. 800-450-7876. Prince is reaching out to us on line three from Ohio. Prince, your question for Mark. Mark from Anaheim. How you doing, sir? Hotel. Uh, well, my, you know, it's kind of interesting. The uh, Barbara, I can't pronounce her last name, but she's the um, one of the judges on Shark Tank. Her brother was found dead in the Dominican Republic. So there's a lot going on there, not to mention what, what happened with Dick Poppy um, being shot the other day as well. Uh, my question for you is... Um, how do you feel about uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders and the situation that she's in now? I don't know if I can sleep now that Aunt Lydia is leaving the White House. <laughs> oh, for you real yeah. folks out there who may not know that reference, Aunt Lydia is the woman who was the evil female in The Handmaid's Tale in the book and in the TV show and in the movie. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, all right. 
Thank you for your call. We got to keep. We have a break. We take a break, actually. Yeah, we got a break coming up. So I uh, got some more folks from across the country got questions for you. If you can get in at 800 450 7876, your calls are all coming up next on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL. And just added to the uh, Power Talk conference, you ready to take another Before we go on, because, you know, I, I'm sorry, folks. You guys got to know this. All right, since the brother wants to talk about Malibu, you folks do your own research. Look up the name, Mitrice Richardson, M-I-T-R, well, I'll just make it say, Mitt Rice, M-I-T Rice Richardson. Mitrice Richardson was, was a straight-A student down here in Orange County near me at Cal State Fullerton. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of us, we started thinking that we're other people and she's hanging out with other people and doing things with other people. And she found out the hard way in Malibu that she wasn't. And it's really sad that when they finally found her body and the coroner told the sheriff's department not to mess with the body until they come out there. By the time the, the, the coroner's office found this body, the sheriff's department had destroyed all evidential value. And it gets worse, folks. My Teresa's mom demanded to be taken there, so they finally had to take her out in a helicopter. Her mom found pieces of her body out there months after the fact. That's Malibu, folks. That's today. I ain't talking 200 years ago. So, the brother, I hope you're happy in Malibu. You better watch your six down there because these are the Nazis with money, okay? you playing with fire in that Malibu. I know these folks. Like I said before, most of the Manson family, the women in the Manson family, were female surfers from Malibu. Let's move on, sir. 800-450-7876. George is next on line four, calling from Maryland. George, you have a question for Mark? Hey, how you doing, Mark? How you doing, Mr. Nelson? I love a, I love a listener who gets me fired up. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> I, I promise I got one question. I got one yes, question. Yes, sir. One question only. All right, so... I think it was a couple of years ago, it was either you or um, Baba Dick Gregory who talked about um, the intruders or the uninvited guests who showed up at the Obama's uh, gala and said, okay, if you don't comply with our, you know, the, the powers that be said, if you don't comply with our rules, this is what could happen to you. Okay, what I said is what I said for the listeners who didn't hear this. This is very important. I've always told folks, presidents don't run this country. The last president who thought he did should have never ridden through Dallas with the top down. When Bill Clinton started thinking he was running things, folks, you look it up. A Cessna airplane crashed on the White House lawn. When Obama started thinking he was running things, all of a sudden you have two people uninvited guests inside the White House. Then you have a guy with a backpack who was inside the White House while Michelle Obama and the daughters were in the house, but President Obama wasn't there. But here was a guy inside the White House with a backpack that could have been a backpack with explosives. That's a warning being sent out to you. Total line, because we can get to you at any time. By the way, folks, you know they did this to Trump already too, right, sir? Do you remember this Absolutely. Chinese woman who just happened to be down in mar lago with like five different cell phones and tracking devices, and they caught her inside his place down there in Florida. That's a warning being sent out, folks. By the way, you know you don't hear anything about that case anymore. So, but I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. That that, that was that was my question, sir. <laughs> I think there were two events where they uh, there was two different um, people who showed up at Mar-a-Lago or who were um, who were Un- uninvited and weren't supposed to be there. Absolutely. And what's worse about it with Donald Trump, since Donald Trump loves attention, he likes to have things done on his private property because he wants to do dirt that the Secret Service won't be able to see. So down there, he's got private security. People can pay money to be members of that club, and they're not going through the security checks the way they do at the White House. And going back to what I was saying earlier about with um, President Obama, the one that when I started telling, um, you know, because I know the White House listened when I come on the show, 1963 was when Kennedy died. Kennedy was called Camelot. Barack Obama was called the Black Camelot. Now, when Kennedy was killed in 1963, his Secret Service were out partying the night before, getting drunk and having hookers. Mr. Nelson, do you remember when President Obama went to Venezuela? Yeah. Do you remember what the Secret Service were doing the night before? Uh, hanging out with some hookers and getting drunk <laughs> folks this stuff doesn't happen by accident and i have a lot of respect for secret service because they know how to keep their mouths shut so trust me that's a warning being sent out 
we won't have your back if you think you're running this country. Do what you're told, follow the rules, and you can wa- you can walk away from the White House a much richer person than you were before you got there. Let's move on, sir. Thanks, George. <laughs> oh, before Thanks, we move George. on, once again, for those who want to get in touch with me, Mark from Anaheim, Political Sarcasm 101 on Facebook. All right. Thanks, George. 800-450-7876. Winston's next uh, calling from D.C. Winston, your question for Mark. Hey, I want to make a couple of comments, and then I'm going to ask him a question here. No, right no, 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 Winston, just no, 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 just please, raise the <laughs> clock and, and just make it a question for him. Uh, Mark, isn't it true that the Rockefellers own uh, 60% of the largest pharmaceutical company in Germany, and didn't he bring the Nazis uh, over after the war? Okay. The Rockefellers got a, a bad rap, okay? Rockefellers were very influential during their time period, but that family, their line has pretty much kind of died out. I tell you, if you all want to, <laughs> I got to be careful. Right? If you all want to know somebody to study, okay, study this right here. Bayer, B-A-Y-E-R, Kodak, Monsanto, Krupp, K-R-U-P-P, and Tyson. T H Y S S E N. You look at those names I just gave you, and look at the amount of money just involved in those entities right there, and you will never waste your time talking about the Rockefellers again. I'll say that again. Bayer, as you know, the Aspen, because they're far more than Aspen, and they made a lot of chemicals for Nazi Germany. Kodak, same thing, made chemicals for Nazi Germany. Monsanto which also made Agent Orange and a whole bunch of other stuff. Krupp, K-R-U-P-P, and Tyson, T-H-Y-S-S-E-N. You folks have no idea. And these folks are buying up everything, and they are putting together a war chest for the Fourth Reich that you cannot even imagine. That is sobering. 800-450-7876. 800-450-7876. Howard on line one uh, from L.A. Howard, your question for Mark. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Folks who sat by the door. Um, I just want to say, first of all, oh, O.J., real quick, when I heard about it, the talk on the street was that it was uh, the mafia did it because they talked about stiletto knives and things. And one guy mm-hmm. said it, but it's hard to believe what anything is saying in nowadays. About exactly. Um, after 25 years, it's really blows your mind. Yeah. But really, uh, uh, Mark, what I really want to ask you, really, is it blew my mind. I heard about those oil tankers going up in uh, the Persian Gulf or getting tagged or whatever. Do you think this might lead to um, to a war, war through some kind of a war? Because it's like the Gulf of Tonkin thing, you know, back in the 60s with the other to Vietnam. And also, way, way back in 1898, when they blew up that battleship in Atlanta Harbor, which got us involved in the Spanish-American War. Do you see any similarities to this? Is that just happened recently? All right. Well, I don't know if the main was blown up. Back in those days, they had kind of um, the the power on ships back in those days. They were still using, you know, steam, and they were using wood. So that may have been an accident, but they blamed it on sabotage to get us into the Spanish-American War. What I will say to you is this. There are certain people in the White House and in the administration who have for a long time made the targets of China, Iran. If you all don't understand why China is somebody they despise, I keep telling you all the John Birch Society. Well, that's where John Birch was tortured and murdered, folks. These folks consider John Birch the official first casualty on the war of communism. And the John Birch Society are fanatics. And now that they control the White House, the Supreme Court, and the U.S. Senate, they're going after certain things that McCarthy wasn't able to do. So when Trump says, let's make America great again, it doesn't have a damn thing to do about make America white again. Even though, I mean, they they might feel that way, but that's not what they're talking about. They feel that this country has not been great since Truman was, you know, forced um, Douglas MacArthur to retire. And Douglas MacArthur's right-hand man was one of the founding members of the John Birch Society. The Koch brothers' father, Fred Koch, 
with one of the founding members of the John Birch Society. You, I know you guys keep hearing me say it. I'll beat you over the head with it because nobody else is talking about it. That's who's running things. That's who's ruining things. And that's who plans on starting what they call this whole uh, war on Muslims. Because they've never gotten over the damn crusades, where especially with blacks, you know, supposedly raping all the Sicilian women, and they want to kill all Muslims. They want to start this holy caliphate because they believe even if they destroy the, the planet with Armageddon, God is going to send them into heaven, and the rest of us are going to hell. So I hope that was succinct and simple, but that's the plan. All right. Let's see if we can get another call in. 800-450-7876. Antonio in New York on line two. Antonio, your, your question for Mark, real quick. Hey, how you doing, guys? Um, hey, just real, real quick, uh, uh, I wanted to ask, how, how can I find old shows of Mark and, and Neely Fuller? Because I searched the Internet, and I don't, I don't find anything, sir. Good question. Okay, one, Mr. Nelson and I have nothing to do with making the podcast for these shows. I thank some of the listeners out there for do recording these shows and then putting them out there as podcasts. However, Google has taken over YouTube. And Google, I've had lots of people, especially in Europe, telling me that it's next to impossible now to find the shows that people had put out there of me on the Internet. Every day now I'm getting messages from people around the world telling me, a show they just listened to the week prior has disappeared. Google is doing a major purge, sanitizing. Um, I'm, ha I'm having stuff that I posted on Facebook that's been on Facebook for years are now being blocked or taken off. Like I said, I got booted off Facebook. I had to get back on Facebook this week. So there's a major um, purging going on around the world. They'll right. use somebody like a Alex Jones because you don't feel sorry for them, but they'll use that as the test case so they can go after anybody. Now, these are all private entities. So these private entities, they don't, the entities, they don't have to go by First Amendment rights, and they, they, they're deleting me. They're wow. deleting me big time. And I don't use wow. any profanity on Mr. Nelson's show. I'm not calling nobody to go out and riot. I'm not telling anybody to rebel. I just share information. They don't want you to have information, folks. Exactly. And just super quick, quickly, I want to ask you um, – is all of this uh, uh, abortion stuff to to help the white race uh, uh, preserve themselves? <laughs> okay, whites in this country are being lied to and told that by 2045 they're going to be the minority. As I'm speaking to you right now, 71% of the U.S. population is white. Folks, come on. I can go for two, three days here in Orange County and never see another black person. Now, I'm not being hyperbolic. So what I'm just telling you is this, okay? It has nothing to do with the white ways other than scaring the hell out of certain whites for the abortion rights. But these folks want to be able to control women. That's what it's all about. It's about controlling you and telling you how you're going to run your body. Old white men who want to rule the world. Right. Keep it simple, folks. Mark, uh, Molly Bell just calling, just uh, uh, just testify about all the stuff you told us uh, back in L.A. That he says everything was true for some of the new listeners. But we got to run because we're running late. How can folks reach you? Well, I don't know because after this show, my truck will probably <laughs> blow up. But Mark from Anaheim, Political Sarcasm 101. Bye. Hey, this is a uh, recent Mark. appointment.